Good morning. Good to have you with us today. We got a little shot of rain for the morning. I think it refreshes all of us, refreshes our souls and our creation, our gardens and plants and flowers. It's a wonderful thing. This is the fifth Sunday of Pentecost. We continue our series on prayer for the summer months. And today we focus on prayers of supplication. A few things that I'll announce this morning. Uh, readers, we're looking for readers for these worship Sundays in the summer, communion servers. There's sign-up sheets right out here. And also for a team we're pulling together to help with technology needs in our worship services, if you'd like to be a part of that. Also, we have our uh, family fun barbecue events. So if your last name starts with G, through M, you're invited to join me in the Christus Rex Center for 45 minutes to an hour for just kind of a light little gathering, supper, and some activities. Then we'll head outside for worship at 6 o'clock. And along with that, we also have our, our uh, regular outdoor picnic, and that's at 515 for those that aren't in that group. So if you'd like to be a part of that, come and join us for outdoor picnic and worship outside in the parking lot here at 6 o'clock. We're really having a great time with that, and it's really fun to be outside for worship in these summer months. And then I want to mention our, our surveys that we have. And if you have not received one of these, can you raise your hand? Because i got a couple ushers that are going to help pass these out. So this is our written survey. We're doing surveys. So just raise your hand. Hey, I didn't get one of these yet. I don't see a lot of hands raising, though. <laughs> and uh, I don't see anybody. So we have those available at the entryways. And then this cute little monkey here, I borrowed this from the library, but it's a reminder that uh, you can also go online and fill out a survey. It only take you about seven minutes, and just follow that, that little uh, announcement you'll see in your bulletin here about the surveys. And uh, you can follow that online on your computer. And then finally, I want to just mention that we started our interim transition planning team uh, ministry, which is a group of people that will gather together who will gather data and research demographics, growth and challenges that we have in our neighborhoods here in Moorhead, and about comparing kind of our church to other churches our size. And we're doing all of that work in the next three months. So. As we get started with that, we want to invite our transition team forward for an installation. So I'll read the names and then we'll have you come forward and stand before the altar here. So Marlene Us, Amy Errol, Cindy Arneson, Maureen Batterberry, Wayne Brendamule, Christy Bierman, Joanne Carlblum, Dwight Ike Flatten, Marcy Flatten, Romaine Fugelstead, Deanne Hansen, Linda Helgeson, Gail Holland, Britt Ingersoll, Renee Ingersoll, Shelley Jansen, Audrey Johnson, Arnie Johnson, come on up if your names are being read, Sarah Kleinkammer, Skip Kleinkammer, Sandy Knudsen, Barb Mortensen, Dustin Mion, Lori Mion, Kathy Nornis, Caleb Som, Kelsey Som, Kathy Schroeder, uh, Rod Schroeder, Dan Sly, Steve Waldron, Connie Walby, and Eldon Woolman. So have you face me as we do the installation. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we're all baptized by one spirit into one body and given gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. These members of Lutheran Church of Christ the King are presented before the altar today to represent you in the coming months as our interim transition planning team. Let us pray. Almighty God, you who called the universe into being, you who formed our inmost being and called us to be your people, we give you thanks for your constant presence. Through seasons of constancy and even change, you are with us, calling us into deeper waters, calling us together in your spirit of unity, calling us out of ourselves into the world to serve others. As we enter into this new era with excitement and even some anxiety, we recall your deep compassion, presence, and abounding love. So bring your wisdom to the minds of this tra transition interim team and spiritually guide their counsels and that in all things they may seek your glory and promote the mission of your Church of Christ the King. Strengthen us to be your church in all times and seasons of life. 
a place where all are truly welcomed and embraced in your love, a place where we find ways that you are active and living among us and calling us to join in your saving work, a place where the story of your love and grace and mercy are embodied. Be with us as we move forward, rejoicing with you and supporting one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now you can turn and face the congregation, and let's thank them for their service and moving forward. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for coming up. Be seated. The last thing that I'll mention as an announcement is that the church council, along with the transition team now, uh, the church council is receiving nominations or recommendations for call committee members. We know the call committee is limited to a group of six, but there can be alternates. But if you are wanting to take a look at that responsibility and calling a new pastor here, we'll start up that work as we move toward the fall. Uh, I would expect that if we stay on task here and get everything completed that we need to do during interim transition time, that we will be on schedule to begin training those people uh, in September and putting some paperwork together and with the hopes that we would have a first meeting with the Senate with the whole congregation the first part of October. And then we move forward in receiving names for your new pastor. So looking forward to this time with you. Let's share in our opening invocation and confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, we question your ways when they differ from our ways and the ways of the world. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your grace. Turn us again to you. Share with us the words that cleanse our hearts and feed us for life in the world. Amen. By Jesus, you are fed and nourished. In Jesus, there is more than you can ever imagine. Through Jesus and the promise of abundant life and mercy, you are forgiven. Let's sing together. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts on fall like flowers before thee, praising thee, the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the gloom of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth, and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou a father, Christ a brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace.
Let us pray to the Lord. the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Let us pray together. O Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings of the day. first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 9 to 14. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. When you obey the Lord, your God, by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in the book of the law, because you turn to the Lord, your God, with all your heart and all your soul. Surely this commandment that I have commanding you today 
is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. The psalm for today is from chapter 25, verses 1 to 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Let me not be put to shame, nor let your enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day, the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. The second reading for today is taken from James 5, verses 13 to 18. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was human like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to the Gospel of St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? So he answered Jesus, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus then, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. 
And then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. When I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. The Apostle Paul writes this In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. In our summer prayer series so far, we have reflected on God's programming us for prayer, bold and persistent prayer, prayers of confession and forgiveness, thanks and gratitude, and lament. Now we come to prayers of supplication. Who do you pray for? Another word to describe this might be intercessory prayer. We pray for others, not just for ourselves. Who do you pray for? Who comes to mind? What situations are you thinking of today? Those who could use a little extra prayer? Have you ever been prayed for? I've been prayed for or prayed over several times in my life. It happened a few times in my life as a pastor. Usually, I'm the one praying prayers of supplication for people in need. People caught up in the straits of life by the side of a member who is hospitalized and for the church. This time, Carolyn prayed for me. Carolyn had literally been out of her mind, losing it, one could say. And this took her to the hospital. She was thrashing about, as I remember. She was having these delusionary thoughts. I know I was there with her. Nothing of what she said was making sense. But today, when I went into the room, the thrashing was over. Something had changed. She had a calm demeanor about her. It was much easier for her. And I couldn't believe that this was the same person that I came to know as Carolyn before. I prayed with and for Carolyn, and then it came spilling out of her. Prayers for me. Prayers for her pastor. I was shocked, but thrilled to hear this repository of faith coming out of Carolyn. Carolyn prayed for me. Carolyn the needy prayed for her pastor. There must have been a need in her pastor that she sensed. Carolyn poured out her prayer of supplication. Has that ever happened to you? Someone stopped you in your tracks of your fast-paced life and prayed for you? This same thing happened just the other day, here, as I was out making house calls for Christ the King. Bishop Bill Tess prayed with me recently. When I had heart surgery with stents being put in quite a while ago now, 15 years ago, I remember a neighboring colleague pastor praying with my wife and myself before I had the stents and after I had the stents. Each of us was individually prayed over at our baptism. Holy God were the words of supplication, sustain Carolyn, sustain Randy with your gifts of the Spirit. Again, at confirmation in the Lutheran faith tradition, at least, when we stood on our own two feet and proclaimed, this I believe, this God I will follow, these words were prayed over our heads, just as parents and brothers and sisters and baptism sponsors put their hands on our head along with the pastors. Father in heaven, 
stir up in Afton and Rowan the gifts of your spirit. Guide their living, empower them, and bring them to everlasting life. You were all prayed for. How do we begin intercessory prayers? A couple of the biblical stories might help this morning. In the book of Acts, I love the book of Acts. It's full of the history of the starting of the church, the Christian church. Paul and Silas were being held in prison for spreading the word about Christ, preaching the gospel, speaking in public about Jesus. It doesn't seem like they did anything wrong to me. But their brothers and sisters of faith in that early Christian faith were on their hands and knees in prayer, praying for their imprisoned colleagues in the faith. The history book of Acts records the church praying and being on its knees in prayer. What happened to those prayers of supplication? Oftentimes we wonder if God is hearing our prayers. If God will hear and how God will answer those prayers. Now, here's what happened. As those prayers are being offered, the doors of the prison were flung wide open. Now, isn't that a helpful image of what prayers of supplication will do for those whom, with whom we are praying? When we are literally on our knees, crying out to God for the needs of our neighbors, our family, our friends, and the church, you can believe that God is going to throw the doors open to freedom. Paul and Silas were set free by the power of God's answer to prayer in the Spirit. Did they run away? I probably would have. The doors are open. Let's get out of here. No, they didn't run away. The jailer, however, felt like he better run away. Paul and Silas ministered to the jailer right there and then in the midst of the believer's prayers of supplication. There was an individual need right at that moment of the prison doors being open. The jailer was in desperate straits. He was afraid. Paul and Silas baptized the jailer and his entire family at that very moment. Paul and Silas lifted that family up in prayer, just as you were lifted up in prayer and prayed for at your baptism. Holy God, sustain the jailer and his family with your gifts. Lead them, guide them, hold them, keep them. We entrust them to your care. Jesus also told a parable about an unjust judge, an unfair judge, really, to whom a widow kept coming and demanding justice. Her cry to the judge was, Grant me justice, grant me justice, over and over again. Grant me justice against my adversary. And finally, maybe in exhaustion, the judge gave in and granted the woman justice. That's the story Jesus told. Jesus used this story, suggests that we always go to God with prayers of supplication and never, ever give up. In the Old Testament days, Moses and King Hezekiah both prayed heartfelt prayers of supplication to God. In 2 Kings 19, Hezekiah prays for the people. He says, Deliver us from the hand of the enemy, that all the kingdoms, all lands, and all peoples will know that you alone are God. The prophet Elijah was instructed to go to a widow of Zarephath. It was just the widow and her son. Hanging on by a string, all they had left was a morsel of bread. Through prayer, Elijah was able to multiply the food that they ate. And if things couldn't get worse, all of a sudden the greatest of all tragedies happened to that woman, the widow. Her son became gravely ill to the point of death. Elijah prayed, Lord, bring this boy back to life. That was Elijah's prayer of supplication that the Lord answered 
the prayer. And Elijah gave the son who came to life back to his mother. We offer prayers of supplication whenever we ask God's help for our loved ones, for our neighbors, for the community, for the church, for our nation, for people across the globe. The word supplication means request and to kneel before God. Supplication is not a quick little prayer that you have at lunch or before you go to bed at night. Supplication prayers come from the deep recesses of our soul and our desperation before God. Every time in Jesus' ministry, when he went people of a humble spirit, he met their needs. The demoniac that cried out to Jesus, Jairus' daughter, and the woman who tugged at Jesus' robe, who had an issue of hemorrhaging for years. When we humble ourselves in prayer, we believe and trust that God will come through, that God will be there walking amongst us with strength and courage to lift us up until relief comes. Maybe that's the best part of prayers of supplication. We can pray to God for healing within ourselves or for others. We can pray entrusting our loved ones to the great physician. We can pray for others. We can pray for wisdom and for direction. We can pray to God for protection. We can pray to God for faith. As Jesus instructed, we can pray even for our enemies. Supplication binds ourselves to God, strengthens us. When we pour out our supplications to God, it reveals our dependence on God. Jesus instructed his followers, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Offer your prayers of supplication. God will provide out of God's richness, fullness, and treasure. God will help you line up your pathways to be in line with where God wants you to go. Be just in the right place. God accomplishes so much each and every day if we just stop and look and listen and observe. God will bend over backwards for us. And whether you believe it or not, God will supply your every need. And because God's provision is based on God alone, you will never, ever have to worry. Here's a helpful pattern for prayers. It's been suggested that we begin our prayers, as I've said before, with a prayer of thanksgiving and praise to what God is doing in our lives. What we have on our table, first in prayer. And next, we take up this humble and confessing posture to be humble before God, to be honest and transparent with God. And then we lift up our petitions for those in need. And finally, we end our prayers talking to God about our needs and concerns, confident of God's love and care. You know, the prophet Daniel, well, he defied the king in his day. The king wanted his prayers of supplication to simply stop. But Daniel didn't stop praying. And where did it land, in, land him? He landed in a lion's den. And guess how God answered those prayers? You know the story. He came out unscathed. About the same time, there were three prayers by the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were thrown into a fiery furnace. Now you think that would take care of those prayers. But they too came out unscathed because of their prayers of supplication. All hands together now. Let these inspirations light up your prayer this week. Come to God with prayers of supplication. God will answer and God will bring strength and courage and wisdom. Amen. Let's sing together.
Lord, whose love in humble service bore the weight of human need, who upon the cross forsaken worked your mercy's perfect deed. We, your servants, bring the worship not of voice alone, but heart, consecrating to your purpose every gift which you impart. Still your children wander homeless, still the hungry cry for bread, Still the captives long for freedom, still in grief we mourn our dead. As you, Lord, in deep compassion, heal the sick and free the soul, by your Spirit send your power to our world to make it whole. As we worship, grant us vision till your love's revealing light in its height and depth and greatness dawns upon our quickened sight, making known the needs and burdens your compassion bids us bear, stirring us to heart in service your abundant life to share. Called by worship to your service, forth in your dear name we go. To the child, the youth, the aged, love in living deeds to show. Hope and health, good will and comfort, counsel, aid and peace we give. That your servants, Lord, in freedom, may your mercy know and live. Please join me as we share in the confession, confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you have placed your word of love in the heart of your church. Fill your church with compassion that we bear the fruit of your healing mercy to a broken world. God of grace, you created the earth with seeds sprouting up to new life. We pray for the flourishing of fruit trees and orchards, vines and bushes. Prosper the work of those who plant, tend, harvest, and gather. God of grace, we pray that you will show us your ways and teach us your paths of justice and love that you will be with all leaders in the city government, county government, state government, national government, and international governments. Guide all leaders with your wisdom and enable them to lead with peace, God of grace. And we pray, God, that you will come near to all who are in need, orchestrate kindness, hope, love, and comfort. We lift before you the dying, the sick, the hospitalized, the lonely, the hungry, and the poor. God of grace. 
God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers in those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. We continue with our liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. Holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. It was on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. This do in remembrance of me. We sing together a Lord's Prayer. Things are now ready. We sing together the Lamb of God. Take away the sin of 
the joy and the love of the Lord we are called to be light for the kingdom to live in the freedom of the city of God we are called to act with justice we are called to love tenderly sisters and brothers united in love we are called to act with justice we are called to love tenderly we are called to serve one another Please stand. Receive the blessing, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and preserve you in God's grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. We pray now that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Amen. Almighty, merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Scott's going to lead us in our closing song. Everyone needs compassion. 
love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures and fill my life again i give my life to follow everything i believe in now i surrender savior he can move the mountains my God is mighty to save, he is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see, we're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, he can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So go now out into the world in peace and in Christ's name be the humble who makes others proud, the poor who have riches to share, the weak who help others be strong, the empty who overflow with loving kindness, the wide arms of the love of God, the treasure of the grace of Christ Jesus, and the health of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 